Hi, it's Amber. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. And guess what? It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. All we need to do is download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Good luck. Hey guys, this is Ariane from AA. Have you ever wanted to start a podcast? Well, let me tell you about Anchor. It's actually the app that I'm using now. It's completely free. You don't even have to pay to download it on your phone or tablet. And you can also use the website, anchor.fm. There's also creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone. Or computer whichever one you feel more comfortable with so anchor will also distribute your podcast for you and you're wondering what yeah it's true you can so it can be heard from Spotify Apple podcast and many many more you can also make money from it come on you know we all love that little little green in our life with no minimum listenership that means you can have one listener or two listeners and you still get paid come on now and it's everything you need to make for a podcast all in one completely so download the free anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started Hey guys, it's Amber and Arian for WPA. Before we get started, just a quick reminder for you guys to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Double A Crime Files and at Twitter at Double Crime. Um, if you have any cases you guys want us to research, um, just email us at double dot a dot crime files at gmail dot com how are you doing today amber uh i'm okay today oh, mm. that's good how about that's you better see? that's better than than being shitty <laughs> yeah 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 it's one of those days uh i already know <laughs> i know that's like almost every other day right <laughs> um so just to fill you guys in um I am doing solved cases on Tuesday, which is today. Amber will be doing um, unsolved mysteries, cold cases, um, any haunted stories, maybe, if you are nice to her on Thursdays. And Sundays, we recap the week or do a teaser for this following um, week. And if you guys missed Sunday's podcast, go and check those out. They're on Spotify and Anchor and on Apple iTunes. Correct? Yes. There, and there should be lots more places. I keep getting emails of where they're um, uploaded to, but there's so many places that podcasts go. All I can say is just find your favorite podcast place and type our names in double A Grown Files and see if we're on there. There you go. And make sure you guys favorite. Um, each one of them, so you guys don't miss a podcast. Um, let us know how we're doing. Again, this, we're just learning as we go at this point. So, um, but we're hopefully improving each time we do it. So um, tonight's story, oh my gosh, we're going to try to, or I'm going to try to com- to comprise all this in less than 60 minutes. <laughs> But so, if, you, if you don't get it, our people that really love stories will understand, then they will be okay with a part two. Because, you know, I like stuff like that. I will totally listen to a part two. 
you know. So if you can't do it, nobody's going to be mad. This is just a lot of timeline that we have to go through. So this was actually, um, the name was actually given to me by Amber's husband. So shout out to him and thank you to him for giving me this name. And I was that? When I was reading this guy, oh my gosh. So I'm talking about Mr. Samuel Little. Mm. And I did not even know of him. And when I was reading his stuff, he's quite notorious. Um, Not as famous as like Ted Bundy um, and things like that, but he's actually killed more. Wow. Have. So Mr. Samuel Little was born on June 7th, 1940. So he's still alive today in prison. Oh, wow. May I ask, what is his ethnicity? He is African American. Okay. Um, he was born in Reynolds, Georgia. Okay. So there's nothing on his father. Um, and he claims. There's not really um, a confirmation by his birth mother, but he claims that his birth mother is a teenage prostitute. Okay. So that may play a role later. But he was mainly raised by his grandmother in Lorraine, Ohio. Typically, a lot of um, Black males were raised by their grandmothers back in the day. Typically. That is... um not very it's not very uncommon to hear that and to know um just to put that out there because somebody might be like why was he raised with his um grandmother Uh, typically a lot of black males or just black children period were raised by their grandmothers Uh, back in that day mothers had children while they were children a lot so mothers couldn't really raise children while they were still being raised so the mother's mother typically took over. So that could have played a lot in a, an emotional. Right. So she, he was raised by her. There was no other really good information on the grandmother. We don't know if, he, if she disciplined him, if she herself was into other things. Yeah. Um, so there's no information on her. But we do know that by 1975, so um, he was or had been arrested 26 times in the span of 11 states. Wow. So by 1975. So he had a very early start. Very extensive and, record. Yes. So, now, what are, uh, what are his arrests for? Um, they have been different for theft, assault, robbery, and rape at this time. And then we later found out that um, murder was in the midst of this. But he was not indicted for some of these murders. Interesting. So he was let go. Um, On the basis of what? (laughs) Like no evidence? No, they had evidence. That's the thing that kills me. When I was reading the timeline, mm-hmm. he um, basically, they would catch him. They would either catch him or find evidence leading to him. He will go there. Sometimes he'll plead not guilty. Sometimes he will actually plead guilty. Interesting. And they won't indict him. Now, so is the, there bribery going on? Uh, well, he is a poor, you know, he wasn't high up in society. So, yeah, no bribery. Exactly. You have all, he's gone through so many um, law enforcement throughout the span of all these states. We're talking about Kentucky, Florida, California, um, Ohio, uh, Louisiana. We're talking about all these cities. So he couldn't Ohio. really afford proper um a proper defense seems like he would get a public defender exactly so and what would happen is once they don't indict him or once he gets put into prison for a couple years 
he'd run off to the next state immediately. There's no lingering around. So he was just he was, ready to go. He just could not have idle hands. Exactly. Wow. So um, it was the first murder conviction was actually in 1982. Okay. He was arrested in Mississippi and charged with the murder of a 22-year-old by the name of Melinda Rose Lapri. Um, she had gone missing in September of that year, and the grand jury, the grand jury was the one who was like, we're not going to indict him for murder. But on what basis? That's what I'm not understanding. Why do they feel like he doesn't need to be indicted? It doesn't show. I was looking for police records. I was looking for the court records. Um, it did not even show any of that. That's so, crazy. Like, if all evidence points to him, how could they just let him go? To me, that's a sign of a broken system. Yeah, very. So, right after he was not indicted, he was then transferred from Mississippi to Florida to be on trial for another murder. Lord Jesus. Okay. Now, this is um, where it gets a little bit interesting. So the murder that happened in Florida was a 26-year-old by the name of Patricia Ann Mount, whose body was found in September of 1982. Wow. The, around the same time that the Mississippi woman had gone missing. So at this point, it becomes serial. Because it's like no cool off point. Right. So the prosecution witnesses for the one in Florida, um, prosecution witnesses identified Mr. Little in court um, as a person who was with Miss Patricia Mount the night of her disappearance. So due to mistrust of witnesses, so I guess they didn't believe um, the prosecution's witness. He was acquitted in oh, January of 1980. Crazy. Somebody there putting him right there, and then they're like, oh, we don't believe me. Oh, well, before I finish this, all these people that he's um, murdering are all women, mm -hmm. um, roughly between the ages of 18 to 26, 27-ish. So pretty young. Um, they don't have a lot of family. They're mainly prostitutes or homeless. So it's not a racial thing. It's, it's not like a racial not. preference. Now, it's, 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 it's mainly Black ladies, but mm -hmm. he will get his hands on any lady. There are a few white Mm -hmm. He will get his hands on any lady as long as they look like they've had no family. Nobody will really miss them. They're in prostitution. They're homeless. That's who mm -hmm. he's aiming for. So do we have a background on the guy? Like, what's so, his religion? What does he like to do? Anything like that that we can profile? There, there's nothing really except for the fact that he attended um, Hawthorne Junior High School. He had problems when he was a child. He did not study very well at all. And in 1956, um, he was held in a juvenile det uh, detention for breaking and entering into a property in Nebraska. Hmm. So you're talking about a 16, 17 year old at that time traveling to Nebraska. Because mind you, his grandmother, he was mainly raised in Lorraine, Ohio. So what are the reports about his mother? Was she ever around? She was not around. He actually moved in with her in his late 20s. Mm -hmm. um, moved 
to Florida where his mother lived to move in with her. And he worked um, various jobs, either a cemetery worker or an ambulance attendant. Mind you, this is what he's telling um, police reporters, police investigators, anybody that he can talk to. So it may or may not be true. Exactly. This is unverifiable right now. Mm. So he claims that he started traveling more to different states more wild, um, more widely because um, he was getting into run-ins with laws. So if he gets caught into one state that, you know, he'll get caught, released, he goes to another state. And it's the same thing over and over again. Kind of sounds like he's an adrenaline junkie. It sounds like it. I mean, 26 um, arrests in 11 states. That's crazy, yeah. I mean, it's got to be more than just boredom. Something's going on there. I mean, of course, not growing up with your mom, not having her around, that's got a factor in that that messes with the psyche. Um, There's no mention of a father. So basically, he probably just feels abandoned and neglected. And the only person that he had is his grandmother. Is there any mention of siblings? No. No. So as far as we can tell, just from speculation, is that he's um, lonely and hurt like mentally confused mentally broken so here's a man that's got a pretty lonely life and has no motivation to do anything better he also probably targeted these women because their standards are low because they'll pretty much talk to anybody because they're wanting to get paid so he's targeting women that would actually pay him attention right you know uh, but it, 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 just seems, it just seems like he's not go. He's going straight for the kill for these for these women. He's not trying to get to know them. What he does is he sees the physical aspect of them. He mm-hmm. remembers them, but that's about it. Now, um, do, do they all have something in common other than being a female? Uh, they all work around prostitution or homeless. So other than that, like I'm saying, like any Mm-mm. features. So so he's not killing out of a memory of somebody. Or like, because some people will do that. Like, oh, this person reminds me of the mother that never loved me. So I'm going to kill this person. Yeah, no. It so was literally just like what we call a low life. Yeah. Okay. Got Anybody it. Anybody that nobody would remember. Got it. Or know of. Um, so after... He got acquitted for the um, Florida lady in 1984. He immediately moved to California um, around San Diego area. And October of that, of that year, he was arrested <laughs> again for kidnapping, beating, and strangling a 22-year-old by the name of Lori bottles wow who actually survived which is a shocker because they claim the police said that her face was so beaten and so swollen she couldn't see so she probably pretended to be dead uh probably i'm not sure but um they were actually shocked that she was still breathing. And then a month later, now mind you, within that, but after he did that to this borrowed lady, he actually was on the run. Mm-hmm. So the police were trying to find him. So about a month later, he was found um, by police in a back seat of his car with an unconscious woman who was what? beaten and strangled in the same location as he tried to went where he tried to murder Lori Bottles. Wow. Now is this woman just unconscious or is she dead? No, she's unconscious. Thankfully police t- caught him in time. 
Okay. Um, so he, this is what kills me. He only served two and a half years for both crimes. But if you get caught with marijuana, man, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it kills he, me. Oh, he, well, he got caught with cocaine. Are you fucking kidding me? He got caught in co- with cocaine. Um, actually, in I because I have two pages up because, like I said, his timeline is oh my gosh, it's absolutely nuts. So he was actually found. Let's see here. So not only did he kidnap, rape, strangle, he also had cocaine, and he only did two and a half years. Yeah. Yep. And yep. guys, this is an African American man. A lot of people are saying that the law is unjust against African American men, and I'm I'm half African American. I I just want to say, this is right here. This is fucked up. This is something that nobody would believe. Yes, yeah, so unbelievable. It's. it's- it's kind of crazy. So he actually, like, for cocaine, he got about four years. But none of this murder stuff stuck. Yeah. See, this is what, this is what's crazy. And he is alive this day. He's he, and he's still in jail? He's still in jail because um, he did confess to over, killing over 96 people you heard that with 96 over 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 96 and um investigators believe they've confirmed 60 but (sighs) they believe he's killed more than 100 technically because there's a lot like i said the the victims were did not have family members so a lot of them weren't reported Exactly. They were Jane Doe's to a lot of these. So what they, how they did this was they, a Texas police officer Mm -hmm. wanted to know some stuff, some, um, get these victims home, basically, Mm -hmm. um, these Jane Doe's, give them a name. And so he went and talked with um, Mr. Little, who it was housed at that time in California, now he's housed in Texas. So mm-hmm. he was housed in California, asked them, you know, if he could do um, a memory. They found out that he can sketch each one of his victims. Hmm. So, so does he have a form of autism? Yes. Yeah, so he drew his his victims like he knew of their age or roughly their age um and that's what they went by or went with his timeline of when they got killed matched it with the jane does how they looked um interesting and things like that and you guys you guys have to watch his actual police interview i watched it I made Amber watch it, <laughs> a yeah. little bit of it, and it, he looks so proud. It's nuts. Like, when I say proud, it's almost like, imagine if, if you had a family member that you love dearly pass away, and you're telling somebody all the good things that they did, all the fond memories that you you've had with that with that person that's basically how he was doing this interview that's sadistic like he was fond of all of this so yeah so he um he served two and two and a half years for those kidnapping and beating in california so then when he got released In 1987, he immediately moved to the Los Angeles area and committed 10 10 murders. 
Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. It's, it's that- been, it's, it's been crazy ride for Mr. Little here. Is there an, any kind of um, mental analysis on him? If they, they found him to be sound of mind. Interesting. I mean, he seems pretty smart to be able to just get to like that. That's why I feel like he's got a form of autism. See, that's what he, this is what he told investigators. This is what he told the Texas police officer that came to him. He said the reason why he was able to get away with all these murders was because he was killing prostitutes and people that just don't care about them. Mm. They didn't have family looking for them. They didn't have a life going for them, according to Mr. Little. They didn't have a life going for them. They were out there selling their body or they were homeless with two. um, They couldn't work, so they didn't have money. They were dependent on strangers, which made them very easy victims for him. So, like, he's Batman and he's just cleaning up the streets and doing the world a good deed by getting he, re- he kept on saying he was God he and said he said that he was doing the work of God interesting and then but then he goes off and he says but it's the devil that um, moved his hands to kill him <laughs> and they found him of sound mind yeah <laughs> Yeah. So this is um this is what he had confessed. Now bear with me because this is quite a bit just on this end. So bear with me. So November 9th um 2018, 2 years ago. 2 years ago. He confessed to the 1996 fatal strangulation of a Miss Melissa Thomas. On November 13th of 2018, he was charged with the 1994 murder of Denise Christie Brothers in Texas after having confessed to the, to the crime to the Texas police officer in May 2018. So all these crimes are still piling up, up to two years ago. Mm-mm-mm. Okay, when was his final arrest? Well, he got, he's been arrested um, since 2012. Okay. So he was in and out of jail. And then finally they were like, you know what? You've confessed to a lot of murders. We're going to keep you. <laughs> yeah, it only took over. A- <laughs> <laughs> so, but he, when he was talking to the Texas police, excuse me, the Texas Ranger, it taken me forever to figure out who the Texas police, what they're called. It's a Texas Ranger. So um, he confessed to the Texas Ranger that all these murders and showing them pictures. Now the Texas Ranger has later said that Mr. Little, since he's getting older of age, um, his brain and his memories are um, not getting that good. So they're trying to get, um, extract as much information and as much drawing as they can before he can't do anymore. Because he's out. How old is he now? He is, well, he was born in 1940. So 60. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's not that old, but I mean, close enough. Alzheimer, dementia, all that will start. But I mean, I I don't think he's still quite young for any of those neurological diseases. But you know, With, um, the amount of killings he did. Now he, I honestly don't think he is a sound mind because he actually had called his paintings his babies. Yeah. Um, he has been known to say that, you know, 
he's got his babies with him, meaning his paintings of his victim. I mean, I mean that doesn't necessarily mean that he's not of sound mind. Um, that's just what he chose to call him. I'm trying to say it in a way that that the people listening will understand. I'm not sympathizing with him. I'm not um, boosting him up or anything. I'm just simply stating that it doesn't necessarily mean that he has a psychological defect because he's calling the paintings of these victims his babies. That could just be what he just calls them. Like, I could just say the same thing about my artwork. That's my baby. You know, that's my, that's just something he's proud of. And how demented it is, that's a different level, but that doesn't really mean that he's not a sound mind. It just means that's what he wants to call him. But um, I do think that there is something. Mm. Back to that genetic thing. I, I really think that anybody that that um, has that thirst to kill is motivated genetically. There's some kind of coding error in their genetics. That's how I feel. Yeah, there's not. It's it's weird that there's nothing really on the family as much as they've tried to talk to Mister Little. Mm -hmm. he hasn't released anything on his family. So, so we don't know if uncles or... No, we don't know any of the uncles or the aunts or we just know it's, from what I know, he's the only child. Um, but I highly doubt that if his mother was a teenage mother for him because I'm sure she probably had other kids later on in life. Now if he at the beginning he stated that he mentioned somewhere that she was a teenage prostitute. Yeah he had mentioned when he was talking to investigators when they were trying to get like a story mm. essentially that's what he had told them was that he claimed that she was a teenage prostitute. So, do you think that he could be targeting these people because of how he feels yeah. about Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Most that's to his mother and she's probably not receiving the message that he that, she, that he's deeply hurt and affected by her so much so that he's killed over 100 people. Probably, but she, he got taken away so young. Like yeah. he, he, his mother was not in the picture at all until he moved in with her when he was in his late twenties. And I wonder why he moved in with her. Um, probably to get away from his grandmother or get away from the law. Because he started off pretty young. Yeah. Getting warrants and arrested and. He seems to have a pattern as soon as he gets either released or let go or caught but not arrested, he moves on immediately to the next place. There's, like I said, there's no lingering around. There's no trying to commit another crime in that particular area. Now, he'll stay until he gets caught. So this here is a man that definitely needs to be institutionalized. He does not need to be released. He does not even need to have some kind of work release, no day pass, nothing. He needs to stay his ass in jail. So the Ector County, Texas District Attorney and Wise County Sheriff's Office in Texas um, announced that on the announced on November 13th, 2018 that Little, Mr. Little, had confessed to dozens of murders and may have committed 90 across 14 states between 1970 and 2005. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. And that's, yeah. So on November 15, 2018, the Russell County, Alabama district, guys, this is where <laughs> I'm at, 
um, announced that Little had earlier that month confessed to the 1979 murder of a 23-year-old by the name of Brenda Alexander. Um, they found her body in Phoenix City. And November 16, 2018, um, the Macon, Georgia Sheriff announced that he had credibly, so they found proof of this, confessed to the 1977 strangling murder of an unidentified woman and a 1982 strangling murder of an 18-year-old by the name of Fredonia Smith. And they all fit his MO, the strangling and all that. Mm-hmm. And, oh, this is his oldest, his oldest, um, Murder. So in the fall of 2018, he confessed his 1982 murder of a 55 year old lady by the name of Dorothy Richards and a 1996 murder of a 40 year old by the name of Daisy McGuire. Wow. Both bodies were found in Louisiana. From Georgia to Louisiana? Yeah. So which is weird because so he if the bodies were found in Louisiana, he confessed that the murders happened in 1982. He was already on trial in Mississippi in 1982, which he was not indicted for, but then got transferred to Florida because they found another body in Florida oh my God. in 1982. Mm-mm-mm. So he was going around, and he was going around pretty quickly. So I'm wondering how long he drove with dead bodies in his car, or if, like, he kidnapped them and held them captive for a while. I think, for me, what it sounds like, the more I read this, was sometimes he'll dump them as soon as he kills them, wherever he's at, and sometimes he will drive a bit and then dump them. Is there necrophilia? No. Okay. He would he would assault them when they were alive. When they were dead, he's done. He he was done. They were thrown away. So he's demented, but not like super demented. Not like Mister um, Cannibal that I did last week. Right. <laughs> that one was super sadistic. Yeah, so um, oh, um, November 19th, 2018, in Harrison County, Mississippi, um, said that Mr. Little had confessed to a strangling of 36-year-old Miss Julia Critchfield um, around the Gulfport area. Mm. And then in... November 20th of 2018, the Lee County, Mississippi law enforcement official said that Mr. Little had admitted to killing 46-year-old Nancy Carol Stevens in Tupelo back in 2005. And this case, that case, Miss Nancy, um, is actually or was presented to the grand jury of January of last year. Wow. 2019. Guys, this is nuts. This is a very nuts story. Um, well, I'll make sure that Aryan posts the link to his interviews when she uploads to Facebook. Be on the lookout for that if you can't find it on your own. But this case here, this one takes the cake. And the fact that he's still alive. And they have been really, have they gotten rid rid of, like, the corporal, like, electric chairs and lethal injections completely? Well, see, here's here's what got me. So he had agreed to talk to the Texas Ranger who went to California. Because, like I said, he was arrested. He was housed in California originally. Mm -hmm. Um, The Texas Ranger was like, can you give me the names, your timeline, essentially? Mm-hmm. 
so I can clear these people off. Tell me your story. He said, I will only tell you if you get me out of California and take me to Texas. Now, Texas is notorious for the death penalty. California doesn't allow the death penalty. So he wanted to die. It sounds like it, but they didn't put that on the table. He's in prison life without the possibility of parole. Why can't they give the man the death penalty? Obviously, I don't know, I don't know if it was um, if that was what the ranger had agreed for him or what, but they crooked, yeah. crooked, I tell you. They just didn't, yeah. It, <sighs> so now a lot of these states, like you're wondering if he's accumulated into one section of the area of the United States. He's not. It's he's all over the place. He, he even went to New York. He went to the southern states, of course, Florida, Louisiana, um, Alabama, Tennessee. Um, went all the way, did it in Nebraska, Ohio, um, California. Yeah, so he was since yeah Cincinnati was one of them. Columbus, he did quite a bit in Ohio. I lived in Ohio in the early two thousands before I came back to Tennessee. I am so glad I didn't meet this guy in Ohio, dude. Yeah, he. I mean, Arkansas, Arizona, Georgia. <laughs> I mean, the list goes on. Nothing was off limits. Yeah. So um, according to him, um, well, according, no, I'm sorry, not according to him. According to the police, as of right now, as of today in 2020, um, he is unable to walk. He's on a wheelchair. He is diagnosed to have a heart condition. Um, and he does have diabetes. Okay, so, so he is they're trying, Yeah, they're trying to get all this information out of him before he actually passes away. Um, and then he apparently, there's not a lot of information on this lady. There, he has a long-term girlfriend by the name of Jean. Um, has or had? had okay she's passed away now okay. um but support i love how they quoted this or yeah supported in quotation supported them through shoplifting <laughs> partner in crime so like but it just kills me that she supported them by shoplifting like she that was i mean i can take that that's her profession I guess I <laughs> really considered a profession. Bonnie to his Clyde. <laughs> exactly. So she did pass away. There, there's no information on her. Um, he did not talk about her. He didn't want to talk about her at all. All he wanted to talk about were his babies, which is the paintings of his victim. Yeah. So he did not, yeah, he did not want to talk. Um he did provide a sketch for a lot of his victims. Um, and there's some of them that gave him their names that he kind of remember. And the, the investigators are finding it harder now because there's some things that he would say that did not match up, but they would think that it was this Jane Doe because 90% of it, of the information would match. And the other 10% is kind of iffy with his memory. Did he have sex with all of his victims? Not all of them, but 90% of them, yeah. So they couldn't do DNA analysis? No. Interesting. You're talking about these, these, you know, Jane Doe's that they had no other information on and from the looks of it he actually played this quite smart because how else 
could you have committed over 96 crimes and just now getting caught? Dude, I think they did an episode on um, Criminal Minds about this. It sounds so familiar. And it just seems like it's one after the other after the other. You're seeing these law enforcement officials make news that, oh, yeah, he confessed to this crime as well. Or, oh, yeah. So it's kind of like, are they really saying it because other other officials are saying it? Or do they have definite proof because no one's questioning them? Okay. Um, so is this coming from, like, the media and news outlets are just coming directly this is from this force. This is what the police officers is coming out like when they go on public notice mm-hmm. and say, "Well, Mr. Little did confess to this murder," but nobody's questioning them. Like, okay, but did you check? Like, triple check, double check, because. There, a lot of these um, police officers or investigators, they want to get a lot of these cold cases out of the way. And the cold cases can involve Jane Doe's, anybody that they don't, can't identify. So he's got a lot of open cases that need to put his name on. Multiple. So they we confirmed, might come across some of him. His yeah, people. they confirmed 50. They've he's completely like, confirmed 50. That's a lot to confirm, and then to know that there's still over half that left to confirm, that's Mm -hmm. nuts. Yeah. And it's not easy, you guys, and I know you're probably wondering, because I wondered too, like, he has sketches. Mind you, these ladies have been Jane Doe's for a long time. They're badly beaten and swollen. You're not going to be able to tell what they look like anyway. Exactly. So you're talking about these Jane Doe's that have been buried probably for a long time. I know there's multiple ones that you have to dig back up. And they were just tossed to the side. And we're talking now in two years ago, 2018, confessing to a 1996 murder. Jesus. So just the paintings alone will not make them identify who yeah. they are. Because we're talking about that date and time that he seemed them. So years and years and years and years ago. Yeah, he just got done. Years, yeah. How long do, so, does it take for flesh to decompose? It just depends on the on like how the body is stored. Like I said, there's some that had to be dug up. Hmm. So they have to actually match when the body was found. Um approximately you know how the body is decomposing that will identify the timeline around the timeline that they passed away and then they will check if it's a male or a female they'll check how roughly their age is when they do that all by like bones correct or no yeah Um, yeah so you're talking you know Back then, they didn't have all the technologies that we have now. Right. And then with his memory um, disintegrating, like, they have to make sure that every little detail adds up before they can be like, yep, this is one of them. Or this is this person. I still don't get how he got acquitted a lot of times. Especially when he pled guilty. It still kills me that he (laughs) did four years for cocaine. Exactly. (laughs) And then, you know, he pleaded. He pleaded um, 
not guilty for the cocaine charge. Oh, Lord. Our system just is such a lovely, lovely broken system. Yeah. So, and then he got arrested multiple times for shoplifting. I'm guessing that's the time he had his long time long term girlfriend. I don't know. But wait, did it, work. did it say how she passed away? I don't know. There's no information on her except her first name. So we don't know if he killed her. No. Mm. No. Mm-mm-mm. But I highly doubt it because he seems like the person that if he wants to kill them, he wouldn't string them along. You know what I'm saying? And hey, love she, is love. She didn't, she didn't um, stop him. She basically let him do whatever he wanted to do. You know, killers do have, a lot of people say that they're not capable of love, but killers are capable of love sometimes they love deeper than people that you know that you would think would love the deepest sometimes they do and that's where their passion derives from you know there's fathers out here that rape and kill and do pedophilia and sit at home with a normal family yeah work a normal nine to five so i mean so love is actually He's actually on the FBI's webpage, um, and it's a long. So the um, all these counties that they that they know he was in and know that he committed the crimes in this count in those counties, all came together and made an outstanding amount of timeline. So twenty four pages. Jesus of his timeline alone. Somebody got paid overtime. So <laughs> these are just for the confirmed county. So these 50 victims. And guys, there are pictures online of his drawings. I will post that as well on the Facebook page. Um, we are running a little bit less on time. I will retrace back on Sunday. Um, but I want to get all these sites to you guys. And this video out to you. I'm telling you, it's, it's so cringy to watch. Because you can see the expression in his face. That he's very proud. That's so interesting. And guys, bear with me. Um, I do have like a lot to do. But I will start getting the twitter updated i'm gonna try to link it with facebook or the instagram that way when we do post on one it will go to the other that way everything can be current so just bear with us on all the many social medias that we have to update um but right now the most current update place to check out everything is the facebook page Yes, it's fa- um, Facebook and Instagram, um, and like I said, they're both dubbed the same name, Double A Crime Files. Make sure you go like, follow um, the share. pages, share it with your friends, and again, if you have any cases you want us to research, we will look through them, whether they're solved, unsolved, any hauntings you want us to take a look at. Um, email us so that way we can have it all in one place. Um, We will still look at our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram just in case you guys go there too. Um, But just email us at double.a.crimefiles at gmail.com. Email us there. We will go through them. And then I've got a list. Amber's got a list um, to go through. We got lots of research to do, and we are so happy and proud to be able to do the research and present it to you in a way that is informal and like we're sitting around the living room just casually talking. We like that. So, yes, definitely. So, you guys just 
let us know how we're doing. Let us um, know what you guys think of these cases. If you guys didn't um, listen to last week's podcast, you can still go on the Apple iTunes, on Spotify, on Anchor. They're definitely there. Um, so go and check those out. And listen to those. It includes Amber's Unsolved Mystery, and then it includes more information that we pulled up that we discussed on Sunday's episode. And we we try to also make sure our anchor pages are updated and current with both of our podcasts on each other's pages. Um, if there's something missing, we'll find we'll find who comment and make sure we get everything right for you guys but we just really want to know how are we doing do you feel like family do you like the informalness do you like how we're just having casual conversation about the psychoanalysis of these murderers minds what do you like what do you not like give us feedback yeah we definitely would love to hear from you guys um we love hearing from you guys actually and again thursday be on the lookout for amber's um, podcast. She is doing another unsolved case. And this oh. one was chosen by Arian. Oh my goodness. Yep. Oh, I think I know. Yep. It's so weird too. Yep. Um, and I didn't do a lot of a lot on her. So um, but on Sunday we will do a recap and we will go live. Um, on our Facebook page so make sure you go like the Facebook and go and follow so you guys are in there with and, us. <laughs> dude when we go live I'm telling you right now it's usually going to be me on camera and whatever I'm doing you're going to be doing with me last Sunday <laughs> I was crocheting my hair so people saw me crocheting my hair um, this Sunday heck I might be coloring I might crochet my hair some more I might play some Final Fantasy you never know it's informal I'm not wearing Anything other than a t-shirt and shorts and just doing my thing. And so you get to join me in doing my thing. And whatever it is, it's going to be comfy. There you go. <laughs> there you guys go. You guys heard it from her own mouth. Okay. So if you guys join us again um, Thursday, we will definitely update you guys when the podcast is up live. So we will see you guys back here actually on amber's podcast but it will be also uploaded here and on facebook and, and instagram and on twitter it will and uploaded on spotify so just check everywhere i think it's also on google podcast man like every podcast place i promise you we have an account somewhere yeah just, <laughs> just go and check it out it will be there like a I said, just let us know what you think. Like us, follow us. Um, if you guys want to know what we look like, our pictures on our Facebook page. Just and let you guys know. It might be on our Instagram. If not, it probably will be. Yeah, well, <laughs> we'll probably do one on Instagram. But you guys have a fantastic day. Have a fantastic rest of the week. Stay safe out there, and we will see you guys on Thursday. All right, double A signing, signing out. out. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye.